today's game against Cincinnati starts a stretch of 30 games in 31 days for the Cubs, and Chicago would like to start the marathon right with a win against the Reds. Jeff Samar just started off right, going five innings of one run ball until an error got him into trouble in the sixth. What looked like a double play to end the inning turned into a fielder's choice and an error, which you'll see here, scoring two and giving the Reds a lead they would not give back. 4-1 to one at the end of nine. Chicago is 4-11 and 11 on the year, good for last in the National League Central Division. To the Redbirds, who had a date in D.C. Thursday night, where Adam Wainwright made the Nationals, well, he made them look bad. He went the distance for a two-hit shutout of Washington, at eight Cardinal runs to that, and you'll get your final score, 8-0, improving St. Louis to 10-6 and six on the year. They'll also put right-hander Joe Kelly on the 15-day disabled list with a strained left hamstring. St. Louis and Washington meet again tonight at 6. Staying with the state of Missouri, Eastern Illinois baseball dropped their opening game against SEMO. Cameron Barra shined at the plate, going 2 for 5 with two doubles, but the Panthers fell short of the Red Hawks, 7 to 5. Eastern's looking to bounce back in game 2 from Missouri. That game started at 5 and still scoreless through 2. Travel days tomorrow when the Panthers and Red Hawks finish up their series at 1. Those same Panthers do more than just play on the field. Without the help of a grounds crew, players have to water it down, rake it, and maintain it. Sportswatch's Brad Kupiak went to a game at Coach's Stadium this week and found out it's not uncommon in college baseball. On game day, the field is in good shape. <laughs> and the ones who got it that way aren't seasoned groundskeeping professionals, but the players who call this field their home. Yeah, groundskeeping, I think anyone in college baseball realizes it's kind of part of uh, where you go. If it's here at LSU, um, you're pretty much involved in the groundskeeping of it. The mounds and the, the field itself takes a lot of care to have it ready. It's either too wet or too dry, so it's it's a lot of effort there. I kind of figure there's going to be some work to be put in. Um, I mean, we're definitely not an SEC program that it's going to have full grounds crew, but we got kind of figured going in that we'd have to do some work on it. It's a given. You know, they all have chores. They all have duties after practice, before practice, and uh, it's, it's definitely what we have to do. As I also found out, with the way the work is divided, it can bring peace of mind to the players when they hit the field. I think it definitely helps because you want your position to be the best position maintenance-wise. I mean, if you put a bunch of catchers at second base, they're not going to do as good a job as you're going to put them behind the plate. So, I mean, as catchers, you know, we really want to make sure that behind the plate it's perfect there, so we're going to play the best. There are areas, you know, you want to make sure it's your area, so you make sure catching is really nice, pitchers take care of the mound. Um, Obviously, we don't have enough to do everything, so some people have equipment, some people have dugout responsibilities, so, but we make sure the catchers really, you know, certain people take care of their areas. Reporting in Charleston, I'm Brad Kupiak for WEIU Newswatch. Scholl added that different teams will tailor their fields differently to fit their team's strategy. The Panthers return to Coaches Stadium next weekend when they face the Bruins of Belmont. Well, the Cardinals dominate sports in St. Louis, but for two months out of the year, the Blues can sway Missouri away from baseball for a little while. The Scott Trade Center was jumping Thursday night when Chicago was in town for the longest game in Blues history. Already 2-2 in the first when Patrick Kane gets the puck on a breakaway, and even with the knee brace, he makes it look easy. They made it 3-2 Hawks until the closing minutes of the game when Jaden Schwartz beats Corey Crawford to tie the game and send it to overtime. Two overtimes weren't enough. So let's start the third and hear the call from NBC's Dave Schrader. Into the Chicago zone, hands it off for a shot that comes in on Crawford. He got a piece of it loose in front of Tanja the score! Alexander Steen! The AU men's soccer team wrapped up its spring season this weekend as the Panthers play host of the Governor's Cup tomorrow afternoon. East will get a chance to see where they stack up against the other Illinois State schools as Northern Western and Southern Illinois Edwardsville compete for the Cup. Eastern opens the tournament with a game against the Huskies, the Leathernecks, and the Cougars on their side of the bracket. The Panthers finished in second place for the past three Governor's Cups. And retro junior Chris Boswell says the team hopes for another good result in this rivalry and rich tournament. These three teams, you know, Eastern, we always want to beat like the Northern, the Western, the Southerns. We always want to beat those schools. So it's a good test for us early uh, in the spring. Tomorrow's action gets started at noon from Lakeside Field in Charleston. The winner of that game plays the winner of the Western and SIUE for the Governor's Cup Championship at 1.30. And finally in sports, the Chicago Bulls open their 2014 playoff run this weekend when they take on the Washington Wizards. Sunday's game will be the first playoff meeting between these two teams since 2005. That's all for sports. Savannah, Lacey, back to you. Thanks, Nick.
Plan to spend a lot of time outside this weekend because we're in for some pleasant spring weather. We'll check back in with Skywatch local forecaster Braden Harp. But first, an Indianapolis man is making a big difference in people's lives simply by paying it forward. Thanks for watching. This is Newswatch on WEIU.